Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this Cabinet meeting on the 31st of October. A reminder that the meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube. Um, I don't have any apologies, but I understand Councillor Smith will be a few minutes late. Everyone else is here, aren't they? So, minutes of the previous meeting um, held on the 10th of October. Can I have a mover, please? Thank you. Um, a seconder, Councillor Daniels. Um, all those in favour? Thanks very much. So, item three, declarations of interest. Is there anything the committee would like to declare on this? No? Thank you very much. Question time, item four, and we have received no questions. Item five then, matters referred to the Cabinet in accordance with the overview and scrutiny procedure, and we have Councillor Couchman here as the Chair of Infrastructure, Safety and Growth to present the report from the committee. Floor's yours, Marion. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, at the recent meeting of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee, we had a very in-depth presentation and discussion about street scene and about our open spaces and trees and who owns what and who's responsible for what. As a, res as a, re um, a result of that, we present two recommendations to Cabinet. Uh, one, that the Council investigates how it could provide an educational programme to inform residents of the services that Tamworth Borough Council are responsible for and what the county are responsible for. Um, and just to carry on a little bit from that, one or two inf bits of information I got from the peer review, maybe we should look at our website and see whether we can put direct links in that make it very easy for people to see, oh, I hit that button, I get put straight through to, like we do for the joint waste and we, the green bin, we can get straight through to Litchfield, maybe if we can go through to County for the potholes and also for trees. So I would love you to, um, I wouldn't love you, but I'd like you to consider um, and, you know, take on board what that recommendation is. Um, and our second recommendation is to investigate the purchase of a bank cutting machine. Now, this is, um, would help our operatives. Where we have got these lovely banks of grass, I'm thinking particularly along Silver Link Road as you go up to Glasgow on the side. If you have to mow along an, at an angle, it can be quite dangerous. You know, with some of those, you could topple over. And there is a special machine that you can purchase. Now, I appreciate that we um, have tight budgets, but I think it would be worth investigating whether or not we could purchase one of those. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Marion. Has anybody got any questions for Marion? Nova. Thanks, Marion. I think this is really interesting, especially the educational programme. I don't know who would take on the investigative work for that, but it would be helpful to maybe ask Staffordshire County Council to co co-lead on that project, co-fund it certainly, or maybe fund it completely, because um, I do feel like a lot of the inquiries go this way, like us to them, and we already take on a lot of the bulk of the work that way, so I don't know who takes on that work, but just an additional recommendation. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it seems like an obvious thing that we would have it on the website definitely that there would be something where you could um, interrogate the system about it so I think that as a starting point that would definitely be a good idea but maybe there is a bigger piece of work to do about how we get this message out we are coming up to um, council tax time it will come round quite quickly where we send an envelope through everybody's door there, there's been a couple of bits of information that I thought may be a good idea for us to send out with that because at least that does get everywhere and if we do that people can't say they haven't seen it at some time. Um, how we would do it apart from that I don't know but there's no reason why we shouldn't look at it because it is that, I mean we, we know because we have it all the time that nobody wants to take responsibility so it's about finding out how we do that. and. The bank cutting machine sounds fabulous. I just worry about the money, but there's no reason why we can't look at it and try and 
see if it is. So we, there was probably an issue year here for you, Dave, if it's a health and safety issue. Yeah, I think obviously if it is a health and safety issue, then we need to look at it because obviously we don't we don't want um, our our uh, employees to be you know put at risk. Um, maybe we need to talk to the the street scene guys and see what their what yeah. their um, take on it is. I don't know how, how often they've been using it really, so um, yeah. maybe we could look at maybe you know other authorities who may already share have one that we can share it or whatever. Yeah. So I think that's probably the, the better way to to go forward with that. Yeah. I'm, I'm more than happy to have that conversation and see see what you know what the what the position is and we'll take that forward. Can I just come back at yeah. Councillor Arpy, please? Um, your education question is very correct. One of the uh, points raised was maybe we should have an education programme that works with the schools. And I remember years ago, Tamworth Borough Council used to run um, a clean areas, I don't know what it called it, but it, was, it worked with the primary schools. And the primary schools basically kept their schools clean and tidy and there was a competition. And in the summer all the winning schools would come up here to the town hall and be presented by, with certificates by the mayor. Now, I don't know whether that's just fallen by the wayside, but it might be something that's worth looking at again um, because often children are very good educators of their parents. So I was just thinking on that. I, I don't know if you're actually aware, but you know that's exactly what we do with uh, trying to up, up the... Um, Recycling rates uh, across the borough in conjunction with Litchfield. So we've engaged the Wombles, so they're coming to town uh, soon. <laughs> if they've been near you. Um, <laughs> no, but th it, there is a, a, a serious point to it. You know, it is known, it is a fact that uh, children um, will change the behaviour of their parents, and that is a potentially some a way we could look to um, achieve some of, some of these things. So. Potentially, we could do that, yeah. And I wouldn't have thought it would cost us a lot of money, so you know that might be something we want to look at. Home. Yeah, a leaflet to take home, yeah, mm. and maybe put some in their lesson, you know, at the, at the key stage one, key stage two, or whatever it is. Um, so yeah, we, I think we can we, we mm. should look at that. So, do we have any more questions? So, are we happy with the? Um, with the recommendations that Marion's scrutiny committee have taken forward. Um, I, th I think it investigating the possibilities of the bank cutting machine and looking at alternative ways for the amount that we would want, it may be one step too big. But, you know, in these days of shared things, there should be another way around it. Did you want to come in? Oh, right. Thank you. So I have a mover in Councillor Clark, a seconder, Councillor Arkney. All those in favour? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Couchman. That's all right. So item six is Staffordshire Leaders Board update. Um, the, and the purpose of this is to inform the Cabinet members about the Staffordshire Leaders Board action to write jointly to the government to seek a conversation about devolution and how it could benefit the whole of Staffordshire. So this, this was brought about by a piece in the King's Speech in July that unveiled plans to create an English devolution bill. It culminated in letters going to the top tier authorities, so the county and um, Stoke, to ask for expressions of interest about how devolution would work in your district. As we already have a Staffordshire Leaders Board set up where the eight district borough leaders attend and the county and Stoke, we already had that format for talking through this and there was a unanimous decision that an expression of interest would go in about a joint um, Staffordshire proposal. So th that has been done. We haven't had anything back yet <coughs> but um, the the main point about the proposal that we've put through is that we haven't put in that we would um, go down the mayoral route so 
so as I say, our expression of interest has gone in and we wait feedback, but we do have a leaders board coming up. I don't know if we will get any feedback. You, you don't know how long government will take to look at this. So the recommendation is just that cabinet notes this update from the Staffordshire leaders board. Do I have a proposal? Uh, Councillor Smith and a second to Councillor Daniels. All those in favour? Thank you. So the next item is the future. Have I missed something? No. Future High Street Funds um, update from September. And I need to find that paper. So this is just a report that is giving you the latest details of the Future High Street Fund um, programme of works. Um, I, I know everyone's gone through some um, updating from officers on this. We're, we're coming into, we're sort of coming into the final stretch on this because most of the contracts are in place now and we're expecting the hoardings to go up around um, the St Editha's Square quite soon. Um, I'm sure everyone's seen the... Um, oh, it was in the Chief Exec's um, bulletin, wasn't it, that told us about all that. So, and we were lucky enough to be invited to the college quarter to go and see the topping out ceremony. So the work there is going well. That's really good. The Castle Gateway, as everyone knows, is on hold until after on fire night so that people aren't disenfranchised from using that bit. There is still quite a long way to go on this, but it is like we can see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, I think, with some of it. At least it's feeling that things are in place now, whereas, you know, co contracts weren't signed off, so that's really good. Has anybody got any questions on it? I think most people have had so many... Um, so many updates on it, haven't they, that you probably feel very well informed on it. So the, the recommendation there, no, yeah, no questions, is that the committee note the progress and challenges of the programme of works. So, yeah. It's a common over a question. Um, like, so we have had a lot of detail around it. I think, well, you know, we may have certain frustrations and wishes. The information is there and clear about where we are and why we are. Make it. I think there is that issue that while from, from our side we know where we're going now, there are those frustrations out there in the town and we, we know that and we, we probably as, as councillors need to go out again and, and speak to some people. I've had um, some contact today that I need to follow up on. So it, it's, it's really difficult because you cannot build something without making a mess. And, it, and it's, it's a shame that, you know, we can't snap our fingers and the work is done. But hopefully people can see that things are progressing and will bear with us. But I suppose the thing is for anyone out in the public is if they do have any concerns, we want them to come to us and ask us the questions because the information is all there. There's nothing we can't um, put their minds to rest about. So... So the recommendations are there then. Do I have a mover? Councillor Artney and a seconder. Councillor Clark. All those in favour? Thank you very much. <laughs> so item eight is the Council Housing Tenants Annual Report. And I'll hand over to Councillor Clark for this one. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so the report details the routine reporting uh, of our performance as a social landlord to our tenants. <clears throat> so with all the changes in legislation, we've used this as an opportunity to review the process. Um, all the details of that are in the report. Uh, on the numbers, overall satisfaction is down to 58%, which shows us that there's, there's a lot of work to be done, um, a lot of which has already begun in other, and, and other areas where we're starting to do that work. Uh, we've been working with our tenants to agree an outline improvement action plan to address concerns raised in the, in the survey. Uh, and the themes for that action plan are in Appendix B of the report. Part of the work was holding our tenants' conference for the first time in, in so many years. Um, tenants and lease leaseholders came out from across the uh, town to share their views, for which um, we at the council are extremely grateful to those residents who came out and took the time. 
we'll be, again be going out. Um, sorry, we will be doing that again next year, and I've I've set the challenge um, of us presenting a, a you said we did at the next one, um, demonstrating how we've acted on on this year's feedback. Uh, we'll also be starting our housing roadshows, where we'll go out into communities, um, engaging in consultation with residents, leaseholders, tenants. Um, we've worked to make these as accessible as possible, with events being held in the evenings and the weekends to capture a diverse set of views. And the timetable of the events are in Appendix C um, of the agenda item. <coughs> Just finally in the report, we've also commissioned Mel Research to undertake a getting to know you survey with our tenants. Uh, and the data collected will help us better understand the needs of our tenants uh, and they'll give us insights to inform future, future decisions more effectively. Uh, this is a really wide ranging piece of work and it's, it's a long term piece of work so I'd just like to extend my thanks to Lee Birch and Tina Mustafa um, for their work on this and all of us involved in this work and I'd like to move the recommendations on block. I'd just like to say um, about the tenants um, conference it, I thought it was a really good event we, we had so many people there and they fully engaged with us some of the questions were difficult but that's what we need but we need people to be able to give the um, ask those difficult questions the challenge for us is to make sure that we respond to them and get whatever the problem is sorted out so that that's our side of it as well this is like the the tenants conference was the start of that and it's not that radio silence for the next year like these road shows are going to be really good as well going out into communities especially like the evenings and weekends as well making sure that we cover a wide range of, um, of views you've reminded me on that because i did actually print some of these off to give to all the councillors because it would be good if councillors were at these um these road shows and being there to be asked those difficult questions so. Yeah, it would it would be really nice to to have a, a schedule of those meetings, but especially for local councillors. So you know, if a, oh, is it on there? The is it? Oh, yeah, they, they are on the report, but I think we can yeah, get an I email think, round. Yeah, I think it would be you know need to be publicised more and maybe tell the, the, the residents that you know your local councillors are going to be present, so you know they can engage with us. So we are sending out personal invites to, to tenants as well. Um, so I'm just we're in the process of getting those signed off. And there's a lot. Of, there's a big comms package around this because it's you know we really want it to work. So we are getting out there in communities, but we can send that um, those dates around to councillors as well, so they can use their own platforms to promote these events as well. That's what I was just thinking: is that all councillors could be using their their social medias to say this is coming up, and I'll see you there. No, that. I think it just doesn't like my little fingers. Um, I think this is great. It's really cool how uh, residents are being engaged with. I just wonder, maybe not for this one because it's the first time we're doing road shows, but in the future, is there a way we can include things also outside of housing in those questionnaires and that engagement? Like, for example, what do you all think about heritage? <laughs> do, do you have any ideas for the town centre? Is that do you, Because it is a demographic of Tamworth that we need to capture their opinions. And if you're kind of already doing a lot of that work it seems like a really good opportunity to find out other things use them so uh, rob will correct me if i'm wrong on this but the tenant satisfaction measures are like specifically around housing um so i don't think there's much scope to do it there but it, certainly in the events we can we can widen it out um to other council services as well but, i mean the focus of this is to get get the housing stuff get it right first and then we'll, we'll Yeah. I think that makes sense. Oh, sorry, just quickly. <laughs> but I also think it provides value to people to have a say, even if it's, you know, it's nice that they they get a say in the housing, but having a say in their community increases their happiness. In and what we'll get with the events as well, we'll learn how how to do them better. Like the more we do them, we'll get better at it, so we can do it for for other areas of the council as well. I think that's really positive because. You know, one of the things that came through the peer challenge that we've just been through is, you know, communication is one of the things we need to do, you know, a, a little bit better or well, not better, but, you know, we need to do, we need to think a, li a little bit more out of the box and trying to, you know, get our message across to our residents, whether they be council house tenants or, or whoever they are, is one of our key things that we need to be doing better. So 
Anything you can do in that in that space, I think, is is excellent. Well, I think I'm quite in the um, chief exec here on a podcast he was on recently that they're about hard to reach groups and that there are no hard to reach groups. It's just about us being innovative yeah. in how we how we engage with them. It's about us being better at reaching them. Yeah, change the terminology. So we have the recommendations before us then. Oh, is everyone happy to take them on block? Do I need a proposal or a seconder for that? Right, a seconder. All those in favour? Right. Now, do I go for the recommendations? Or, yeah. Or is that fine? Right. So we've, <coughs> we've done it. Fabulous. Right. We are on to exclusion of the press and public. And this is to say that members of the press and public be now excluded from the meeting during consideration of the following item on the grounds that the business involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of Schedule 12A to the Local Government Act 1972 as amended. Can I have a mover and a seconder? All those in favour? Thank you. Thank you to everyone who's watching this online.